Between January of 2007 and December, the banking sector dropped by 25% relative to the rest of the market in the year leading up to the global financial crisis. This was an early warning sign that trouble was brewing in the banking sector. The same thing happened to the consumer discretionary and home building sectors, showing that consumers were getting squeezed at that time and the real estate market was also weakening. Each of these sectors are very sensitive to the economic cycle and the weakening of them and their deterioration throughout 2007 was a key warning signal that the economy was heading into a downturn. When we look at the banking sector, the consumer discretionary and home building sectors, when we look at all of these sectors today, we see that all three of these have been weakening throughout the last year. The only two times we've seen this happen over the last 20 years were in the year leading up to the global financial crisis and the year leading up to the 2020 recession. The weakness that we're seeing in these sectors today is a sign that the U.S. economy is deteriorating, but it's something that's clearly not been taken into account by the U.S. stock market that is currently experiencing one of the most incredible stock market rallies in history. We're going to dive into the data and history to understand what are the most likely paths for the U.S. stock market given this underlying weakness. We recently sent out an update to our members saying that a short-term pullback on the market was becoming a real possibility and something that we're on the lookout for. But the question is how big could this pullback be? Just a 3 to 4% pullback, a 10-15% pullback as many people are calling today, or a much larger pullback just like we saw during the 2008 financial crisis. Let's first take a look at whether this is a plausible scenario today, and if so, when it could actually play out. Such large market corrections need to be accompanied by rising unemployment. Every single large stock market crash that's been 30% or larger that's occurred throughout history has been accompanied by rising unemployment. Today, the unemployment rate in the U.S. sits at a healthy 4%, which is clearly not something that the stock market is worried about. But if it were to begin to rise, it would mean that the U.S. is heading into an economic downturn, the first downturn since 2020 and before that, the 2008 financial crisis. We think that this would bring about a huge amount of risk to U.S. stocks. The stock market today is at one of the most expensive levels of the last 200 years. This is the Schiller P.E. ratio, a very respected measure of stock market valuations. And you can see the S&P 500 has valuations that are nearing similar levels to what we saw in 1999 and that are now above the levels we saw in 1929, right before the Great Depression. Typically, when recessions occur, it leads to lower market valuations. And severe recessions can lead to much lower stock market valuations like in these instances right here. If the Schiller P.E. ratio were to come back down to just 20, which is still on the expensive side of the valuation range of the last 100 years, this alone could trigger a 30% drop in the market. Not to mention that during recessions, stock market profits go down. So in this scenario where the unemployment rate rises, the market could be at risk of as much as a 60% pullback or even larger. A 60% pullback would take the S&P 500 back down to the same level it was in 2015. Now rest assured we don't think this is an imminent scenario. The key metric that we're looking at to gauge how quickly the scenario could occur is jobless initial claims. These have been trending a little bit higher recently, showing some weakness in the job market, but we won't be too concerned about the job market until initial jobless claims exceed about 260,000. When this happens, it would be telling us the job market is actually cracking and that the stock market is at risk of a much larger correction. When that happens, we'll be closing down most of our stock market exposure and adding lots of recessionary bets on our website because the risk of a large market crash becomes a real possibility. Right now, however, that's not the case. And the truth is, it could still be a few more months before the job market really begins to crack. This is why we're still riding this bull market with our members, holding on to a lot of the bets that we added during the market correction in April. But in the short term, we can make the case that the stock market is a little bit overextended. The S&P has rallied by 13% since the bottom in April and by almost 35% since the bottom in October of last year. It's very possible that the market could react to a couple of bad economic reports triggering a short-term correction. Over much of the last 30 years, we've seen a large number of short-term shallow market corrections on the S&P 500 that did not occur during economic recessions. Some were just shallow 2 to 3% pullbacks and some were larger 10 to 15% pullbacks. Most of these usually reverse 
on their own, or the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Central Bank, saves the day and props up the market. This is something that happened a lot in the 1990s. Every time that the market would pull back a little bit, Alan Greenspan, the Federal Reserve chair at the time, would talk about rate cuts and it would trigger a market rally. This is a phenomenon that was coined the Fed put. This is also something that the Fed did many times following the financial crisis, announcing new programs to stimulate the economy every time that the market drops. But many people believe that the Fed won't be able to step in to save the day as they've usually done because inflation is still too hot. Indeed, when we look at core inflation, it's at much higher levels than anything we've seen over the last 20 years. It remains at around 3.4%, a substantially higher level than the Fed's 2% target. So many strategists out there believe that any slight economic weakness could trigger a very rapid 10-15% pullback. That's the case, for example, for Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson, who predicts a 10% pullback on the stock market over the next few months. But we think that's false. Today, the Federal Reserve interest rate is above 5%, a similar level to where it was during the 1990s and substantially above the current headline inflation rate, just like it was in the 1990s. The Fed has already talked about potentially cutting interest rates in 2024, so the Fed put is definitely still here today. This is why we recently sent out a memo that a 2-3% to pullback on weak economic data was definitely a possibility for the market, but that the Fed would likely quickly respond to this weak data and likely push the market up for another leg higher. We think the real market correction will only come when the job market really begins to crack and that could still be a few months away. We have been cutting some of our exposure here and there on successful trades, like our position on Tesla that's now up over 60%, but we'll only really be cutting our exposure when the job market begins to crack.